Hey, welcome back, folks. Dave Ensign here. Uh, sorry I've been out for so long. Um, right before the holidays, I went ahead and broke a couple ribs and in a fall. And, boy, that, that was pretty painful. It put me out of work for a month. And you don't realize sometimes how much you use the muscles on the side of your body. But I found out, and even, you know, doing something as simple as sculpting was incredibly painful so that wasn't gonna happen but I'm back now folks and uh, got some new developments here as you can see right in front of us I went ahead and and started what I could on this tiki bird sculpt um, I'm gonna take you through exactly how I got to this point so um, funny thing I I found something on my desk I want to share back when I was doing some animatronic work at Disney uh, I was a outside contractor basically but you know I was dealing with tons of people out there and and they never knew my name of course I didn't have a name tag so I asked the the supervisor you think I could just have a name tag it says Dave so that people don't go oh hey you you know, when they see me walking around the Jungle Cruise or something. And she says, oh, no, 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 we can't. That, it's a privilege to earn a name tag as a cast member. So you, you just can't walk around with one on when you're when you're not a cast member. It's like, okay, well, uh, I solved it myself. I, I went ahead and made my own. <laughs> Let me show it to you. I printed out a graphic and put it on Styrene and then put a pin back on it screwy squirrel folks Tex Avery cartoon <laughs> and solve that problem later on that same supervisor said oh my people are so creative that they they can even make their own name tags whatever anyways let's get back to business here now something happened on the way to getting to this point that was very important I remember in in the uh, wonderful world of Disney program Disneyland Showtime I remembered that during our tour of wed narrated by Kurt Russell at some point he goes even the family pets blah 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 and, and there were there was a cat from the graveyard scene without its fur on but there's also a toucan and I remember seeing that a long, long time ago, and I thought, there's no birds in the in the Haunted Mansion. Maybe Disneyland used to have a toucan or something. I don't know. But um, what happened there was they're showing you the creation of the Walt Disney World animatronics because the show came out in 1970. So they pretty much built duplicates right away of all the Haunted Mansion characters but that bird he's on his way to the Walt Disney World Enchanted Tiki Room Tropical Serenade sponsored by Florida Citrus Growers so that's that's pretty interesting I uh, I screen grabbed a couple things here he is right here and it's beautiful it, it shows exactly the form we need and uh, in in the video, his head only moves left to right, and the the beak moves, so all of his functions aren't moving, which is fine. But uh, you can see already that it's he's uh, sculpted down pretty thin. He looks thin, but once you get you know his head looks really big. But once you get the fur and feathers on, it all comes together. A lot of people when they make an animatronic or sculpt for an animatronic, they they don't realize how thick fur cloth can be it's a good quarter inch should be allowed for that I think so on we go I, I took my original uh, drawing that I showed you last time and I made a green line to represent you know the form under the fur under the fur cloth and I superimposed it on this toucan I found online I think it's in was it in one man's dream or still is if that's still open I couldn't believe how I'm not patting myself on the back here but God damn it it was pretty close 
I came pretty close with my original drawing to what a, a tiki bird actually looks like. Let me see if I can move that around a little bit. Nope, ain't gonna happen for me. Oh, that's all right. So, what I did was, I then traced that green line form onto some cheap, you know, real thin wood from the craft store. You know, a craft store base there too. Nothing fancy. And I, I realized that the toucan picture I got online, that it was stuck in a weird position. It wasn't like a, a the normal resting position. So I saw this head off and, you know, used a little piece of wood there to, to scab it together to get it in more of a position as that, that bird from the Osmond show up there. And there, there we have it. I glued it on a dowel rod and uh, bought myself some Sculpey, which I've been using for years. And I should have bought stock in it because the stuff's way expensive. But <laughs> luckily they came out with a knockoff version, which is just as good. So that leads us back to there. That's here we are today. So you can see I'm starting to use the Sculpey, starting to lay it on. I, I've built up these areas in tinfoil because, you know, it, it saves you an enormous amount of clay, oven baked clay. And for the eyes, I found these little round marbles in my wife's craft collection. So if you see here, they're actually perfect. They are 14 millimeter, and that's exactly what we need up here. So these are going to be the stand, and this won't wind up being the, the eye itself. This is just going to be a stand in for it for, for when we mold this thing. You know, you want the eye to be nice and smooth. So, um, you might be wondering why I mounted this thing on wood. And I'll tell you, it's because I like to do that because I'll always have that center line. You see there? This will never go away. And I can measure from that center line out each side to make sure that, you know, the cheeks and all the the eyes and all that are perfectly, you know, perfectly set from center. And I will never lose the shape because here it is. As long as I stick to this, I'm going to be good. So I sculpt pretty fast. But you see, I'm going to put it all on here. And then we're going to oven bake this stuff. It's not a good practice to start with one side, but sometimes I do. You know, you make it stick real nice. And this whole thing's going to go in the oven when it's done. So it's all going to be baked nice and hard. And that way, I like to use the polymer clay because then I can come back and sand it nice and smooth. I can get it pretty smooth, but. Uh, let's let's get it really really smooth and of course I, I found some pictures online that show the um, front view of a toucan you know so I can see the width which is very helpful but yeah you you wonder you wonder you know did Blaine Gibson just sculpt one or, or did they make several and uh, you know, try to decide what they wanted? I don't know. But whatever they did, it, it definitely has the Disney touch. The old school magic. I don't like to use that word sometimes. Sometimes I feel like it's overused. But all of that stuff from back then was definitely magic. There's no doubt about it.
but you see I need to get it to stick to the wood real nice it's important this first layer get it to stick there good see we're looking nice and thin Like I say, I've, I've seen homemade reproductions of this guy online, and I don't mean to bash anybody, but uh, I just don't feel like one's ever been made as close as it, sh it should be or could be. So we're going to see how close we get this guy. I've always wanted one of these. To the point of obsession. <laughs> For real, <laughs> it's about as about as much as I obsess about Magic Skyway at the World's Fair. Shout out to my friends at work who gave me great feedback on the first video. Uh, Donnie and Steve and Billy Bob, of course, Billy Bob. Everybody else. Old Billy Bob's doing good. Uh, we got a, we got some projects in the works. Some real long shots and might just work. But uh, we're pretty hell bent lately, folks, on bringing back a special kind of attraction that's not a movie IP. You know, and um, we're starting to really kick around some good ideas about what we what we might come up with, what we might build. Of course, Westward Hole in One is still on the books. We're definitely going to build that. And uh, Billy Bob's given me a lot of good input on that. He's been helping me out a lot lately on it. So we'll all be golfing soon. In the beautiful Palm Springs style Wild West of 1962. <laughs> Dude Ranch. Man, we're going to have fun with that. We certainly are. A lot of you contributed to my Indiegogo campaign. Um, and we ran into trouble. We ran into trouble. We got taken for a lot of money by a uh, rather rotten character but it doesn't stop me I'm still moving on we can start getting this on here now in a few minutes here I'll let you go because um I'm gonna go ahead and do a time lapse of this because I sculpt I sculpt pretty fast but not that fast to keep you entertained <laughs> But we'll do a time lapse. That'll be great. And, uh, man, what else? I'm, uh, getting my brass stock around. Starting to figure out, you know, uh, what I need as far as the brass innards for this thing. Um, yeah, pretty much, pretty much got it set. And, and you know what? You're going to find all this, you're going to find all my information. Um, I may start a Patreon. Tell me what you think about that. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. I, I might start a Patreon. And then those that join will have access to um, my personal blueprints when I'm finished with this thing. And, you know, access to the, the form itself. You know, maybe I, maybe I can go ahead and, you know, if you're a supporter you can order a copy of this shell and build your own you'll know how by the time we're done with this and you can do it you can do it you'll see a lot of people I think don't realize their own potential as far as um, what they're capable of because it's scary 
it's scary sometimes you look at a project and you know you, you think it's some kind of voodoo or <laughs> witchcraft going on there and when you actually see how simple it is you know the door opens and you, you feel excited about it and you can you can do it and I'm gonna show you how because we all need one of these we'll do a parrot next or something but uh, I always like the two cans also ran into a um, an idea my grandmother she used to have these little model kit birds made by Bachman and um, I think it was part of a nature series of, of these bird models the little plastic models you know life-size pretty much all kinds of birds and she would paint these things to look absolutely realistic as a matter of fact I, I think my grandmother who was an artist would have fit very well in the old school wed you know working with Harriet Burns and all those people because she wasn't really that good as far as sewing as far as you know painting sculpting she really was that good I think if she had been in a different time and place she would fit right in over there but anyway um, the work she did like uh, you could order a little cardinal set you know you got a little cardinal and they had these little clear plastic eyes that would glue in they'd sit on a little branch they're hollow and they're like crying to be animated check it out check it out I'll, I'll try to post a link to some of these kits they're kind of expensive because they don't make them anymore but you can you can find them on eBay you'll know what I'm talking about when you see them and she used to dry brush the little feathers on these things and they were wonderful she'd have them all over what was called the Florida room back then it was basically like a enclosed porch you know in her house she had a bunch of plants out there and around all the plants she put all these birds and I, I was fascinated by those things they remind me a lot of like uh, the animatronic bird on Mary Poppins finger in the movie uh, they remind me of um, Carousel of Progress you know the robins are back sure sign of spring that kind of thing hey I want to thank my friend Don too he sent me some uh, wonderful cowboy records some old vinyl that will play on the speakers at Westward Hole in One uh, fantastic songs and he also sent me copy of this Walt Disney magazine with my favorite Mouseketeer Darlene on the cover thanks Don I appreciate it buddy yeah see we're, we're making sure we get all this on there really really good so it sticks I hate to sound like a cheapskate folks but I'm, I'm simply not rich and <laughs> when you buy a Sculpey yeah it can be expensive so uh, this is slightly cheaper Sculpey and it comes from the craft store Michaels whatever joy and fabric same same thing it's slightly cheaper but if you got a coupon like my wife always does you know, you get a 60% off coupon on this on any item. And you can start buying these up and storing them. And these are these are white, of course, but uh, they're better than normal Super Sculpey or Sculpey. The white original Sculpey formula was kind of sticky when you tried to sculpt it. It was, it was very hard to smooth. Uh, the flesh color was, was and still is just dynamite but we're gonna go with white here I want to see this thing in white only because it'll look like the bird in the Osmonds show <laughs> let's take another look at that one too oh yeah look at that see oh well, we're getting there we're going there
What else? Oh yeah, digging through some stuff. Tons of stuff stored away. Found this. Bought this um, pre-opening Disney MGM Studios coin. Yeah, not bad. Walt Disney Productions. <laughs> I remember buying that thing, actually. Oh yeah, found my little flashlight. My uh, theme park urban explorer starter kit flashlight. Used to take it on the haunted mansion and try to see stuff. Yep, I was that pain in the ass kid that did that. But man, I had to see how it was made. I had to see some clue as to how things were done. That was always a fascination of mine. Anytime I could see anything like that. I mean, it, it led to us running around in Horizons, you know. We had to know. We had to know the ins and outs. We had to know what it, what was in there. And we had to document it. That was the most important thing. So we did. MesaVerdeTimes.blogspot.com Check it all out there. See how that's coming? And we're gonna, we're gonna start to see from the front view, start to see exactly how far to go. It takes look, it takes piece by piece. It really does. If you if you're new to sculpting, you know, you want to make something, it really just pick off little pieces and start building it up. And daydream. Don't think too much about it. Start getting into daydream state. You ever notice that? You people that create things, draw, sculpt. You'll slip into this daydream state, and that's when you do your best work because you've shut down the right side of your brain, <laughs> pretty much. You know, and the, to me, that side's the critic. Oh wait, right or left? See, I don't even know. It's been shut down so long, I don't even know. Maybe it's the right side that's creative. Anyways, you get in that daydream state, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes I put the TV on when I'm sculpting. Drawing a picture, doing something like that. And it's funny, when you... When you look back at the piece, or you look back at the drawing, you can remember exactly what you were watching on television. <laughs> That's why my sketchbooks, they're, they're sort of a journal. That I can look at any drawing I, I drew in the past, and I know exactly what was going on at that time. It's like my own little private journal. In a language I only understand. There we go. Oh man, this is going to be great. I'd be listening to uh, Enchanted Tiki Room music right now if it weren't for YouTube and their weird rules. So, maybe I won't monetize this stuff at all. Maybe I'll just listen to whatever I want. Oh, it's almost time to get that eyeball in this, in this side. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch over and start working on this side some more. Well, folks, I'm going to let you go. So I can really dig into this. I, I may even take it over in front of the TV set and work on it on my lap over there. Yeah, but you can already see that it's be 
becoming enchanted. <laughs> All right, folks, I'm going to see you next time. All right, uh, stay tuned. Please comment, like I said, below. And uh, let me know about that Patreon thing, or if anybody's even interested in, in having a copy of this. You know, and we'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, that, and hope you enjoy it. Bye.